Hello and welcome to Gradient's weekly roundup of key economic and business developments in Sri Lanka for the week ending 17th February 2023. I'm Nishan Pigera. Here are the week's top stories. IMF Debt Roundtable on Friday. Sri Lanka to improve trade and cooperation with Thailand and Bangladesh. Electricity tariffs raised by 66%. Postal voting called off. In our main story this week, on Friday, the International Monetary Fund is meeting creditors of Sri Lanka, Ghana and other debt-troubled nations. The discussions will focus on addressing issues related to the current debt structuring framework, which in several countries has reached an impasse. While the Paris Club of Creditors and India have approved debt assurances for Sri Lanka, China offered a two-year moratorium and to discuss more relief. China's stance has led to delays in the island nation securing an IMF facility. On Monday, the Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal to expedite the free trade agreement with Thailand. According to the Cabinet spokesperson, Bandalu Gunwadhana, President Ranil Vikramasinghe had expressed his intentions to sign this agreement before the end of this quarter. Moreover, the Sri Lankan government is to enter into a memorandum of understanding to form a Sri Lanka and Bangladesh Joint Advisory Commission. The objective is to strengthen and expand bilateral relations between the two countries. The Public Utilities Commission approved a 66% hike in electricity tariffs. Effective 15th February, the four-member commission gave the go-ahead despite Janakarat Naika, its chairman, objecting. The latest hike comes in addition to a 75% hike in August last year. To secure an IMF facility, Sri Lanka has to operate a cost-reflective type structure. According to the Election Commission, the scheduled postal voting for upcoming local government elections is delayed. Issuing a statement, Saman Sri Ratnayaka, Commissioner of the Election Commission, said that the delay was caused due to reasons beyond their control. The government printer had refused to issue ballot papers until due payments were made. Ballot papers were to be distributed from Thursday, with postal voting taking place from the 22nd to the 24th of February. In other news, the Sri Lankan Medical Association warned the country's health sector is heading towards a total breakdown, starting with a shortage of around 300 essential medicines, including a complete lack of 160 specific items. This has resulted in hospitals being forced to conduct only critical life-saving surgeries and delay all other surgeries. Sri Lanka intends to procure such medicines under the $1 billion Indian line of credit. To check off another IMF condition, the Cabinet approved the final draft of a new Central Bank Act. According to Cabinet co-spokesperson and Minister Bandalagun Vardhana, the new legislation will vest more powers to the Central Bank on monetary policy and will allow it to operate as an autonomous organization. The Act will now be presented in Parliament. A craft dismantling yard is to be set up at the Mathala Rajapaksha International Airport. A senior official at the airport speaking to the Daily Mirror stated that a Boeing 700 series aircraft will be the first aircraft to initiate the dismantling project and that it is awaiting approval from the Central Environmental Authority and the Civil Aviation Authority of Sri Lanka, among others. And now let's take a look at the weekly movement of the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index at the Colombo Stock Exchange. At the Treasury Bill auction held on Wednesday, yields on all maturities fell. Of the 124 billion rupees worth of bids, about 71 billion rupees were accepted. And here's how the rupee performed against the dollar this week. In other market news, Binod Chaudhary, billionaire investor from Nepal, was in the country this week. He held discussions with Dinesh Virakhodi, chairman of the Board of Investments, on potential investment opportunities as well as the progress of the infrastructure at the Colombo Port City. And that's a wrap for this week. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel at the link below for more updates on economic and business developments in Sri Lanka. Until we see you again next week, thank you for watching. Stay safe.